Dr. Kim Lam. Welcome to the Medical News. On this edition of the Medical News, we will talk about the newest guidelines on the use of statins. According to the American Heart Association and the American College of the Cardiology have released new guidelines in the use of statins. This is an important news. Currently, statin is a very widely used everywhere around the world. Here with us today is Dr. Sang Tran, who is currently practicing internal medicine in Foster, Virginia. He will share with us the newest guideline on the statins. Please join me to welcome Dr. Sang Tran. Hello and welcome to our show today. Hello, Dr. Tran. Before we go into the new guideline of the use of statins, would you please talk a little bit about uh, what really statins is? Well, the statin means really a very common medication. I think is I believe is most of the people in the OEN may use one of them. Statin means just the group, the class of medication that has been using uh, for the last three or four decades to reduce the cholesterol with the hope that to reduce the risk of mortality from the heart attack and from the stroke. So let's say we have the group of medication. The first one is atovastatin. The brand name is Libitor. The second one is Lovastatin, is Mevacort. Or we have the new one, the Crestor. The name is Rosuvastatin or Simvastatin or Zocor. But right now we have the combination of the statin with the other uh, antihypertensive medication. For instance, the Cardioid is the combination of the Amlodipine and the Simvastatin. The Vitorin is the combination of the, the Simvastatin uh, blood seizure, this is mean the medication to block the cholesterol uh, from the intestine. And then the F5 course is the combination of the simvastatin with the niacin with the hope to increase the HDL in the blood. In the nature, we also have statin. If you listen to most of the, uh, the news and on the YouTube and on the internet, you can see is the statin can be found in the, the red yeast rice has been promoted a lot recently and also in oyster mushroom. So these are the nature that God given us to understand the statin. But later we also know that the statin usually come from the yeast or the mushroom. Dr. Tran, I understand this group of medicine has been using for a long time in around the world. Would you please talk a little bit about the process of research and how they discovered this drug? Really, this is very easy to, for us to just talking about cholesterol and statin, but you need to know this is cholesterol was found about over 200 years ago, and we never able to recognize anybody with that kind of discovery that's really impact the life of so many people later. The cholesterol was found about 200 years ago by a French uh, chemist called Francois Boulacher de La Salle. He identified cholesterol in solid form of gunstone in about 1769. Until 1815, another chemist by the name Michel Eugene Sevreux He's really named the first compound that he names is cholesterol, not cholesterol, because friend names. But then up until 100 years later, in 1913, one of the military physicians in St. Petersburg, Russia, he really the first one to introduce, induce the, the process of atherosclerosis I mean the deposit of the fat into the artery of the rabbits. Nobody really paid attention on that kind of, of work in the lab until later, in 1928, one of the German chemists, Adolf Windaus, he really, the first one who understand the structures of the cholesterol, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1928. Up until 1965, one of the Nobel Prize was given to American Robert Woodward. He's the best biochemist from Boston, Massachusetts. He did a lot of work in synthesize most of the medication that we have and synthesize the B12 and really make a lot of good progress in medicine based on the way he synthesized most of the structures. And one of them very important, he able to synthesize cholesterol 
and prove the first time the cholesterol may have to relate to the atherosclerosis process. To prove that 200 years ago, the person who first discovered this is correct. And also to prove that the doctors in Russia is correct. That means cholesterol have the impact in causing the atherosclerosis of the vessels of human beings. Well, the story really is uh, before they discover the medication to treat the cholesterol, you need to know this is because they have the event in the histories of America that the President uh, Roosevelt, after the end of the World War II, and he's supposed to meet the uh, President uh, Winter Churchill uh, of England to have the big meetings and discuss about the post war developments and really helping the other country to rebuild their countries. And during that meetings, he's excused because he, he felt so fatigued. The physicians found that he had blood pressure about 260 over 100. This is very high for a person his age. Really shortly afterwards, about two months later, he died from the stroke. And the uh, Professor White, the one who really took care of him, he come up with the ideas is how to do the study to prove that the cholesterol, high blood pressures, and the smoking could be related to the heart attack or stroke. Because President Roosevelt is usually he usually eat, he eat a little bit uh, smoking, and also very high blood pressures. So I think this is the beginning of the study that really discover and bring a lot of things for the uh, humankind later. So they forming the called Fragmentham Heart Study. Most of the physicians know that study because they're the first time they started in Massachusetts in 1948, they recruited about over 5,000 men and women and they demonstrate after so many years study, they conclude that cholesterol, along with hypertension and smoking, was the key factors related to the risk of heart attack. So since then, people starting to do a lot of study how to bring down the cholesterol. I mean, talking about the new medication we call statin. When the, officially this medication is on the market, and who actually, that we should thank the discovery of this medication. The statin really is uh, first discovered by a uh, Japanese biochemist that a lot of people, they really couldn't really recognize its name and never mentioned is the name of the person really discovered the most important medication they've been using right now for the last three decades all around the world. And they make billions and billions of dollars just selling the medication. But unfortunately, Akira Endo, the Germany biochemist from company Sankyo, after he found the mavastatin in the fungus called Benicillum citritum. But unfortunately, the mavastatin is very toxic for the body and able to tolerate. Then until 1978, the Merck drug company heard about that and they sent people to Japan to study along with uh, Mr. Endo. And finally, they found another new uh, chemicals, they're called Mevacord, and they market in 1987. But basically, they found in the fungus with the name Apacillus teres, the statin they're able to use to treat cholesterol. So now we have the Mevacord all over the places, they're selling. But the problem is, most of the patient, including the physician, who using Mevacor really did not believe that the taking Mevacor may reduce the risk of the heart attack. Therefore, the Merck company decided to do the study. If you take the Mevacor, how was it the benefit of that? So they did the study in Scandinavian Simvastatin survival study in five years. Finally, they found that if the people taking medication, the statin, they may have to the chance to reduce the heart attack about 42%. So they compared two groups, the group taking the medication, the group doesn't take medication called placebo, and they compared the group, they found exactly they reduced the, the risk of heart attack about 42%. Now, with that discovery, the study really opened the market for a lot of drug companies, making a lot of different medication called statin, in order to make a lot of money as well.
Dr. Tran, could you please describe how the group of statin drugs affect our body that to help reduce the cholesterol? The process of making the uh, cholesterol in the body, uh, we need to remember since two sources of cholesterol come to our body. The first one from the food, and different kind of food may bring a lot of cholesterol to our body. But the second group is very important because the body has to make cholesterol. Why is it so important? Because cholesterol is the key, the key element of all kind of cells in the body, especially the cell membrane, especially cholesterol also helping with the nerve conduction system in the brain and other area of the body. And lastly, cholesterol is the key factor for the body to produce the hormone for the body, like sex hormone, female hormone, different hormone in the body. So therefore, cholesterol is not a toxic substance. Cholesterol is very important for the body because they have to make cholesterol for the body to use it. But it's too much cholesterol do harm for the body. Now, how they can block the, the process of making cholesterol? You look at the screen, you can see the process is take a lot of stage, starting from the acetyl-CoA in the liver. In order to make the cholesterol, they have to have a chance of reactions. And one of them, very importantly, called the enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. This is to start the beginning of the process of making cholesterol. If we block that, this means the statin block that enzyme to so block the whole process. So they can reduce the production in the liver to reduce the cholesterol in total. Dr. Tran, before we go into the new guideline on the use of statins, would you talk about the old guideline? The old guidelines have been set up in 2004 by the experts, mostly from the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology that uh, usually uh, there's all the time they do to work together and along with the National Institute of Health and uh, specialized in studies of the uh, cholesterol. And they come up with the guidelines uh, for the physicians or for the experts in the field to using and as a guide to have the treatment of people with high cholesterol. Now the old guideline 204 saying it is the treatment has to reduce the cholesterol below 200 milligrams per the uh, DL. The LDL need to be below uh, 100. Uh, if the patient has a heart attack, they have to get a little lower over uh, below 75. And then at the same time, have to increase the good cholesterol called a high density lipoprotein, HDL, to the higher level. The higher, the better, because the HDL will protect the body against the, the LDL. And certainly in the this guideline, they're talking about how to assess the risk of heart attack in 10 years, or assess the, the risk of heart attack and the stroke in 10 years, based on, in order of the uh, risk factors. The first one is the high cholesterol. The second group is family smoking, and then the tension at work, the diabetes, high blood pressure, and the obesity, especially in the abdomen, because right now we measure the circumference of the abdomen to really to consider as risk factors for people who have the, developed a heart attack. So aging also will count as the risk factors. The levels of the LDL also risk factors. HDL level also quite considered as risk factor. And then the lower the HDL, the worse the situation because we need to improve the HDL, this considered risk factor. And finally, the levels of the blood pressures, the higher, the worse the outcome. So these are the 10 risk factors. And most of the experts based on these risk factors to predict whatever the risk involved in that person, for example. If the patient is about 50 years old, come to the office, and the, the blood pressure uh, run maybe 150 to over 90, and the smoke and the cholesterol come out to 140. So just that numbers, the physician can assess the risks. This is high risk uh, group. And then the risk of the heart attack and stroke could be about 20%. Now, with that group, they need to get treatment in order to prevent and reduce the risk factors. So that's the old guideline, showing not to treat, also treating, but also reduce the risk factors for them in order to prevent the uh, incidence of the, the heart attack and also stroke and reduce the mortality from, from heart attack and stroke.
Dr. Chen, you mentioned that the family physician can help a patient to calculate how much the risk factor that person will uh, have a heart attack or a stroke uh, later in life. Uh, can you briefly describe that, how you calculate well, the risk factors? It is, uh, right now we have different way to calculate, but basically with the guideline 204, they based on the age, you know, the younger, a little bit, the risk is much less. The people get older, no, the risk is uh, much higher. For instance, for the age of about 20 and 34, the risk is the point that they want to, to use it at the point. It's minus seven, but as you over 70 years old, the, the point is you need to adding 14 points. The second group is cholesterol based on the age. If your cholesterol is less than 160, the risk is for young age is about zero. But if you about 40 years old, your cholesterol is about 160 to 190, usually the point is you have to add in three points. If you're over 240, you get the number higher, six points. And the next one is depend on the SDL, the good cholesterol. If you have high cholesterol, the, the point is minus one. But if less than 40, you have to add in two, two points. Now, the smoking, no smoking is zero point. But if you smoke, then the point they use is about five point for the young people. So if the young people 40 years old smoke and a little bit high cholesterol, we calculate and adding all the point, usually they have maybe about over 15 point. That's mean about 20% risk of develop heart attack in 10 years. That's the way we calculate the risk factors. And right now we have the formula that we can using and just given the information inside, they can call it for us. Yeah. Dr. Tran, when you help treating a patient with high cholesterol, besides reduce it lower level, are there other factors or other issues that you should pay attention to? Based on the old guideline, I think it's just they focus more on the numbers. This means the cholesterol you have to bring down to less than 200, and the LDL you have to go down less than 100. And the HDL, you have to build up to increase the HDL to protect the body. So then just calculate the risk factors and advise the patient to reduce all the risk factors they can do. Like blood pressure, they have to take blood pressure medication. They have to reduce the weight and they have to reduce any, whatever the risk factors that we just talked about in order to prevent the heart attack. Dr. Tran, now let's talk about the new guideline. According to the American Health Association and the American College of the uh, Cardiology, they announced the new guideline. And it seems like it caused a lot of controversy between the physician and uh, the public. Would you please talk about this and tell the differences between the old guideline and the new guideline that make uh, a lot of people confused? Well, the new guidelines really come out after 10 years. We've been using, most physicians and most of the specialists have been using the guideline for the last 10 years. But now the time had to change uh, because uh, right now with the old guideline, uh, people, what they use is that. And they use for their group of people, they recognize it needs to changing. So the changing is very important and may causing some controversial issue, but really very concrete and precise guideline, and we're able to use it. The first one, they focus more on risk reduction by using statin, and for special group, they highly recommend using high doses of statin to reduce the level of cholesterol and reduce the LDL, the bad cholesterol. The second guideline mentions about not focus on the specific target, not using the number, but the lower the better. The lower cholesterol, the better. The lower the, the LDL, the better. The higher the HDL, the better. Thirdly, they also reveal the global risk assessment for preventions. That means the vision continue to calculate the risk factors in order to help the patient to reduce the risk of heart attack in the next 10 years. Now, lastly, they're talking about safety recommendation. After so many years using, people complain about safety, complain about different things, they stop medication sometimes, uh, you know, they're afraid of having liver problem, 
things like that. So right now, the guide I mentioned specifically the recommendation about safety recommendation is so important now. Which group of patients that really need to use to be treated with the statins? Definitely, so we have four groups right now with the new guideline. People with the heart attack, people who have the catheterization and showing they have blockage, they definitely have to use statin with high doses. We're talking about now the moderate or high intensity statin therapy. Does mean the physician don't use the low dose anymore. But for people really just come out from the heart attack, they have to use very the highest dose as possible. For instance, when people with just a heart attack come out of hospital, they have to be on Libitor maybe 80 milligram instead of just 40 milligram or 20 milligram, like usually we do in the old way. But now the levels is very high. They got high intensity statin therapy for the first group with the heart problem or stroke. The second group is patient, whatever the total cholesterol. If the bad cholesterol in LDL is so high, over 190 milligram, they definitely need high intensity statin therapy. The third group is whoever had diabetes type 2, at the age of 40 to 75, they definitely need to take some statin to prevent from the, the risk of heart attack. And finally, whoever have the cardiovascular risk over 7.5% or higher need to be on treatment. That means, for instance, one person about 50 years old, smoking and also have high cholesterol, they definitely need to get the treatment for statin in order to reduce the risk of mortality. So these are the new guidelines. Maybe a little bit new for people, but it's more intense and more precise and more aggressive. That's, I think it's, this is to summarize how the approach is. They get more aggressively treat the people with cholesterol. Beside all these main points, important point of the new guideline of the use of the statins, are there any other factors or any other issue that we should be aware of or should pay attention to? Well, the new guideline also mentions about the, the they really stress on the importance of the lifestyle in managing cholesterol in young population. That will come out very soon because they will now target the young generation. They want to prevent them, they want to warn them, and they want to prevent and reduce the risk of the heart attack for the young generation. So they will target the school, with the high school and elementary school. It will change in the way people eat and changing lifestyle. And more exercise, eat healthy food, uh, less cholesterol and more vegetable. So you will see Based on this guideline, they will apply all over countries and using the importance of lifestyle changing. And also they stress about how to use aggressively statin instead of using the uh, low dose. Because most people, most physicians, most patients usually happy in the way we treat them. The low dose, the better. Well, I just give me a little bit medication. Hopefully I will do exercise, I will be on diet and just take a little bit light. 10 milligram, don't give me too much doctor because this may do harm to my body, it may cause liver, suffix. But the fact is right now, the studies show that no, the low dose is, is not the right choice anymore. Uh, need a bit more aggressive, you have to bring the cholesterol down as soon as possible, you have to bring the, the bad cholesterol down as low as, as possible. That's the way for the new guideline. And finally, they highly recommend not combination of the medication to treat for cholesterol because you do more harm, because causing more side effects. For instance, in the past, usually we combine the uh, cholesterol medication with the anti uh, triglyceride medications. And in order to combine and, uh, one pill or use two pills, and hopefully we can reduce it, must be good, but it's using more, more harm to the, the body because of the, the increased side effect of the, the treatment. You just mentioned that uh, recently the new guideline is really pushing for aggressive treatment, which is a very strong dose to help lower the cholesterol. So how safety is this for the long-term use patient? And what are the side effects based on the new guideline? The new guidelines is, uh, considers the uh, safety issues is very important. And so after the study, so many years, at least 10 years, the sees that people are really concerned about side effects of medication. And really, the fact is, reality is, is people don't have love side effects. For instance, they may have muscle pain, they have muscle tenderness, they may feel weak, they have cramping, 
they feel fatigued when they take medication, especially during the blood test, they can see what the liver become abnormal. So you have to stop the medication because the medication I'm taking right now is causing my liver problem. That's usually the patient share with the physician that, that point or the physician worry that if I continue medication, it may cause more harm to the liver. But the, the study and the new guidelines show that doesn't matter as to what the side effect is because if the liver function is slightly increasing, don't worry, don't be panicked because that's routinely, this may happen when you take the statin. But right now, they consider very important issues is the benefit just outweigh the risk of the side effects. That means is when you see something a little bit aching here and there, but the benefit of taking statin is so important and so great that may reduce the, the death from the, the heart attack. So if people worry about liver, the liver issue, they may die from heart attack. People worry about taking medication, sooner or later they increase the risk of having stroke. So what is really important? Either liver side effect is medication or the stroke or the heart attack, this is important. So right now they stress to that. They say, don't worry too much. Don't worry about the side effect because statin is so important. You have to follow instruction and let the efficient guide them to you to that in process in order to get the full benefit of taking the statin. Dr. Tran, another concern that the public is talking about is statin drug develop diabetes. Is that true? Well, the fact is, right, is really is, uh, right now the guideline uh, confirmed that the side effects, meaning when you take long-term medication, like people with heart attack, and taking about 10 or 20 years of statin, you may end up having a little bit diabetes. But the study shows only one to three per thousand of the people taking statin may develop new onset diabetes. The guidelines really highly recommend to follow these people, but they won't consider just the side effect that we need to avoid taking statin because they don't want to treat a thousand people take the statin may develop and up like that. So right now I hear a lot of rumor. People keep challenging as asking if I take statin, I may have developed uh, diabetes. But really the fact is not really uh, a big concern right now for the new guideline. Uh, Dr. Chen, uh, there's another issue that some people are very skinny, but they have high cholesterol. What advice would you have for these people? Because sometimes they refuse to take medication because they think they don't need it. Well, does it matter if you're skinny or you're just fat? Because uh, some people are skinny because they're born that way, because the number of, of, of fat cells, they have limited number of fat cells when it was born. But the people really born with the uh, large amount of fat cells, they may have big body and big fat. But that doesn't mean it's we based on the cholesterol level. A lot of Asians, even though they're skinny, but they have high cholesterol. So the, the ways we have to change the lifestyle, the way, the way that we eat, but most of the cholesterol only comes from food and beside the liver, make their own production for the benefit of making the other uh, chemicals in the body. But the food is the most important, the way we have to change it, the way we, uh, we eat, that's I think the best way to, to deal with the cholesterol. And Dr. Tran, before we go, uh, do you have the last word of advice on how to prevent a stroke or a heart attack? I think the advice I'm going to give you, Julie, is just, uh, I have to borrow from Dr. Elliot uh, Anman, the president of the American Heart Association. I think he's, just, he's promoted what we call is life symbol seven steps. Life symbol for him is symbol, but the thing is just, you need to understand what the meaning of, of seven steps. Seven step means is you have to be very active. <clears throat> you do exercise, you're walking, is get active and try to change the, the way you eat, eat better. Eat better is the term. Eat better means it is less calorie, it less cholesterol, it less the fat stuff and fry stuff in order to control your cholesterol, in order to lose weight, and also in order to reduce blood sugar. And finally, according to the seventh step, you definitely have to quit smoking. So if you're able to apply these seven simple steps, Hopefully you can reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke, and hopefully you can prolong your, your life that way by just some simple changing the way you eat or the way you do things and exercising. Well, thank you, Dr. Tran, for sharing the information. Very important to the public.
Again, thank you for uh, watching our uh, show today. And again, thank you, uh, Mrs. Lam. Thank you, Dr. Tran. Thank you for joining us. That was Dr. Sang Chen, who just shared with us the effect of statin and the new guidelines on the use of this group of medication. We hope the information provided by Dr. Sang Chen has shed more light on the new guidelines of the statins. That is all the time we have for the Medical News Show today. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Kim Lam. We'll see you next time on the Medical News.